What up, everybody? Joe White here. And uh, happy WrestleMania week. We got treated to one hell of a documentary, and I'm not talking about the Roman Reigns documentary. I'm talking about the Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda documentary that is now on Peacock. You need to go out of your way to see this. You need to go out of your way to see this. It is awesome. Um, I'll give my mini review of it. it. It's it's a if you don't if you don't finish that documentary and you don't have a lump in your throat at least or tears in your eyes or both, you don't have a heart, man. That documentary is so well done. It's so well put together. They need to, you know. Uh, Mike Johnson of PW Insider made the comment of they need to start shopping these documentaries around to like film festivals and seeing if they can start winning awards because these documentaries that that, that WWE and Association of Peacock is putting out are flat out amazing. I mean, they are amazing. Um, I will say that that they gave a lot more detail. To, and behind the scenes stuff than I thought they were going to. And that's all I'm going to say. Uh, the ending of it is great. The, there's a bit of an after credit scene. Don't miss the after credit scene. Um, the best way I could describe him is he was the modern day horror version of Andy Kaufman. Like, had so many ideas running around in his brain and everybody, and, and they do say to him in this, that he, he was difficult to work with at times, you know, but just mad respect to WWE, mad respect to everybody in the, in the, uh, Rotunda family for this, uh, go out of your way to watch it. It's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. The only thing I wish they would have included is the a little bit of background on his theme songs. Like the theme song that he had um, when he was the, the Bray Wyatt, Wyatt family character. And then his theme song when he came back. I wish we would have gotten a little bit of background into the choosing of those songs. Um, but that's just nitpicking. For nitpicking's sake. Otherwise, documentary's damn good. WrestleMania is this weekend. And along with that comes a lot of press. And we got one hell of an interview from Ariel Hawani today. With a one Mr. CM Punk. And Punk is making the rounds because it's WrestleMania. You got to do Radio Row. You got to do all this stuff. They're in New York, which is not too far from Philly. Um, I have a feeling that anybody who is at Raw tonight, and I'm recording this while Raw is going on, hell of an opening segment, by the way. I can't wait to see how that plans out. Um, anybody who is at Raw tonight will probably fly home for Tuesday and Wednesday, and then Thursday morning, I think everybody gets to the hotel, access is going to start, or... WWE World will start um, Friday. Of course, you got the SmackDown and Hall of Fame. And then Saturday, you got NXT Stand and Deliver. You got WrestleMania. You got the Slammies. Uh, Punk said today he's going to be doing the pre-show, which is going to be freaking amazing <laughs> to see. Um, I might actually have to watch the two-hour pre-game show both nights because we're getting Punk. Um but he did an interview today, and I will link to it below. If I remember to link to it below, if not, just look up MMA Hour on YouTube and watch that interview. They actually put the whole, they, they went about two hours. And he went into a lot of detail, a lot of detail. And, and, and basically, the shit that he said, just further cements what Jim Cornette and Brian Last and myself and AC 
and my boy Hollywood Jeff Edwards. It's all of us. Everybody, you know, Dave Scher from PW Insider has said this. It just confirms what we've said and what I have said all along. This man is a the, Tony Khan. Tony Khan is a money mark who does not know how to run a wrestling business. And when he says, oh, people just want to see good matches, with those eyes bulging out of his head, Eric Bischoff is in this camp too. He said it too. I mean, Eric Bischoff is, is just right in there with us and Cornette and everybody else. Tony Khan just does not know how to run a business. He does not know how to book a show. He does not know how to write a television show. I mean, when when he he does not know how to be a boss. The man just thinks, oh, I got my wrestling company and all my money. And I, I can't be the boss. I, I don't want to be that guy. He doesn't. It's not that he can't. Okay. I don't. I think he's perfectly capable of growing a set and making decisions. But he doesn't want to piss anybody off. He doesn't want to have anybody. Heaven forbid somebody should say it's Tony Khan's fault. Tony Khan likes to put the blame on other people and put the responsibility on other people. As evident, I mean, he tells a story about how the Jack Perry thing, he, he can't go into brawl out. He can't go into the all out, the brawl out and all out thing. Other than that, though, I got the impression that anything else was wide open. And he went there. He went there on this whole firing. He talked about the promo and about how he got shoved into this room with so-called journalists like like Dave Meltzer and everybody else in that fucking place. And he just he just had enough at that point. And said that everything is fine up until that hangman Adam Page promo where Page just decided to go off script as my phone goes off. He just decided to go off script and basically it all boils down to the fact that they think that he got Colt Cabana fired when Colt Cabana had not been on fucking TV for almost a year prior to him getting hired. And he said that there was a time when Colt Cabana came up to him and goes, hey, can we talk to where we maybe smooth things over to where things ain't going to be awkward? And Punk flat out said, I'm not talking to you unless a lawyer is present. And honestly, I can't blame the guy. Not when the same guy is telling people, hey, this guy got me fired. Why don't you go squawk about it to, to the so-called wrestling journalists? Because that's what kick-started this whole thing, is Meltzer being friends with the Young Bucks and printing whatever it is they told him to print. It's bullcrap. It's unethical. As a journalist, Dave Meltzer, you are unethical. You are flat out wrong and unethical. You know, when when he flat out says, and with a smile on his face, oh, I can't, he can't talk about anything because he's got NDAs. You're so giddy about the fact that Punk has an NDA. Well, guess what? The NDA must not cover everything. But Punk talks about how after the all-out thing, he was injured. His tricep was injured. He can't say whether it was injured in the match or whether it was injured after the match. 
And that pretty much tells me that it got injured in the brawl out. And it, it it just it boggles my mind how this guy does not run, know how to run a company. That when he when he got injured, they set him up for his surgery. They paid for his surgery, and then they left him on to himself. He had to book his own physical therapy, and he did not hear from that company. He did not hear from anybody in AEW. For six months after the surgery. Six months. Your top drawing star. Six months. The guy who you chose to be your champion. Six months. The guy who got injured. Drawing you one of the biggest gates that he ever had. And you go six months. Without even as much of a high how you doing. Come on. Come on. And, and and this goes out to the Young Bucks. This goes out to Tony Khan. This goes out to anybody associated with that company. Come out and say something your own bloody selves. Come out and set the record your, your own self. Hey, hey, Khan, why don't you, Tony Khan, why don't you do a couple lines and then, and, and then get on TV and, and and let us know what really happened if it's if the story differs any great any greater. But no, you won't do it. You'll you'll feed it in through Dave Meltzer. It's stupid. And then when they did come back, Punk wanted to quit right then and there. He's like, this two shows thing isn't gonna work. It's not gonna work. And then he talks about how the see the the Jack Perry thing happened. That Tony Schiavone came up to him because yes, he was running Collision at the time. Collision was designed to be Punk's show, so Punk is kind of running the show and having to be what Tony Khan won't, having to do the job that Tony Khan won't, and goes on to talk about how. Tony Schiavone comes up to him and goes, hey, I need your help with something. Jack Perry's cussing out doctors. Jack Perry's cussing out me. He's cussing out Tony Schiavone, who's a a producer, supposedly. He's cussing out doctors. He's cussing out security. He's cussing out for other agents. And he goes up to Tony Khan, and Tony Khan tells him to handle it. Because heaven forbid Tony Khan should get his hands dirty. And Tony Khan leaves him to handle this. And he goes, all right, you're not going to like the way I'm handling it. And he goes up to Jack and goes, look, dude. I've, you know, the doctors have told you no. This guy's told you no. That guy's told you no. Shivani's told you no. Now I'm having to play, play the bad guy and come up here and tell you no because you wanted to wreck up a rental car. The boys ruin it for the boys. What do you want? You're going to bash a, a rental car with a pipe and then return it just because you have a vacation plan and you want to get banned from the country because you don't want to come back to Canada. You know, then what are the rental car companies going to do? They're going to stop renting to professional wrestlers because, hey, the last pro wrestler we rented the car to messed it up on some stupid TV angle. The doctors are telling you not to do it because glass could fly up and hit you in the eyes because the windshield does not break like normal glass does. And Jack Perry says, okay, I just thought it would be a cool spot. Punk goes, yeah, it is a cool spot, but, you know, use your head a little bit and quit doing this internet mess. You want to do the internet crap? Come to Wednesdays. You want to do real wrestling? You come here to Saturdays. And then the thing that all out happens and Punk is in his locker room. He sees this happen. He goes up to Tony Khan again. So this would be like the second or third time that Tony Khan 
refuses to be a boss. Tony Khan refuses to have balls. And Tony Khan goes, well, what do you want me to do about it? Dude. I'd be like, if I'm, if I'm the fry cook at McDonald's, and I could see that we need more fries, and I go to the manager and go, hey, can, I, can you watch this? You know, we're out of fries. And the manager goes, what do you want me to do about it? You're the boss. You say, hey, well, the fries are back there in the freezer. Go grab some. Next time you see them getting low, feel free to go grab some. If I'm Tony Khan, I'm pulling Jack Perry aside and going, what the fuck do you think you're doing? What do, I'm trying to keep the peace around here, and you're just riling stuff up. You're stirring up some crap. Stop. But no, it's all friends wrestling, and we got to keep the peace, and everybody's got to be just so happy, and we're a family, blah, 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 blah. I can't grow a set of balls and be a boss, because heaven forbid somebody should dislike me in the locker room. You're not one of the boys, Tony Khan. You're the boss. Act like it. So Punk, after all this happens, he goes to Jack Perry and goes, why do you keep wanting to do this internet stuff? Why do you keep wanting to call me out? And Punk goes, well, if we got a problem, do something. So he put him in a chokehold. He put him in a damn chokehold. Samoa Joe's right there and says, hey, stop, stop. We got a match. Punk lets go of the chokehold, looks at Tony Khan and goes, this place is a joke, you're a clown, I quit. And he walks back to his locker room and Jerry Lynn and Paul Turner, the referee, and Samoa Joe had to come to his locker room and convince him to go back out. And the only reason why Punk went out there was because, hey, I helped draw the house. I don't want to disrespect the referee. I don't want to disrespect Jerry Lynn, who's the agent. And I don't want to disrespect Samoa Joe. Plus, this is probably the last chance I'll ever have to, you know, wrestle Samoa Joe. Let's go out there and tear it down. And they did. It was a good match. But there you have it. He was fired for cause, but he was out the door anyway. It's pretty ridiculous, and all it does is confirm what I've said all along. Tony Khan has no place and no business running that company. He, he does not know what he's doing. He doesn't know how to be a boss. He, Booker, okay, if, oh, maybe. But he needs to hire somebody to be the end-all, be-all in that company and go, hey, Tony has given me free reign to do whatever, and I'm the boss. And it's, you know, it's just like this shit with the indie show this past weekend. Wrestler A doesn't want to win the title, but Wrestler B doesn't want to put him over, and Wrestler C doesn't want to... I'm sorry, but if I'm a booker in a wrestling company, yes, yeah, sure, I've hired a private contractor to come in and do the job. That's why they call it doing the job. And if I tell you you're going to lose your title to a jabroni who with only six months' worth of experience, guess what? I expect you to make that six-month or experience guy look damn good while you drop that title to him. Otherwise, I'll vacate the title. You can get your bags, get out of my locker room, and I'll go to them to the ring like freaking Paul Heyman did with Sabu and tell them this guy doesn't want to do business. This guy doesn't care about the audience enough to do what I've asked him to do. If you know, it, it's it's Jim Cornette is so right when he says that you know, as a booker, you need to do what the booker says, or you can get the fuck out of the locker room. 
You can get if I heaven forbid I was ever a, pr a promoter. I've done my part by promoting the show. I put you on flyers. I've passed those flyers out. We've drawn a house. You're going to do me the respect as a professional wrestler and do what I've asked you to come here and do on my show within reason, of course. Or you're going to leave and you're going to get out and you're going to go away and I'll never book you again. And by the way, I will spread the word and tell people, hey, you may want to think twice before booking this guy because he doesn't always like to do business. But to, to have a kid, a punk-ass kid, cussing out people like Tony Schiavone? You, you know, you're lucky Schiavone didn't just fucking goddamn go get you fired. And then, but but that that doesn't matter because because Tony Khan. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to grow a set and be a boss for once. Do some hiring and fire and realize you probably don't need half the people you got on that roster. Realize that you need to tell people to check their egos at the door, and if it means firing the elite, firing the precious little young bucks. Fire them. Had they'll be just fine. They'll go back to PWG and the Indies and New Japan. And then you can be free of your beast of burden. And actually book a wrestling company as opposed to a company like CM Punk does. Says they put on good matches for one quarter of the house. Anyway, folks. WrestleMania is coming up. It's a hell of a build. I have not been this excited for a WrestleMania in a long time. I'm looking forward to so much this weekend, so much. I'm looking forward to going home. I'm looking forward to watching it with my with my son and my friends. I, I'm just I'm I'm looking forward to this weekend so much. But if you see a big rig on the road. Give us plenty of room. Do not tailgate us. Let us over if we need to get over. Go the speed limit. And if you can't see our mirrors, we can't see you. We'll see you down the road.